Hi, welcome to Sailing Swallow. In this episode, I'm going to change the engine oil. It's a little bit overdue. If you've not done it before, it might be helpful to watch in some way. I'm not sure which. There'll be a few hints and tips in there somewhere along the way, I'm sure. But it is relatively a simple procedure. You will need a few bits, however. This is a sucking machine. Sucks the oil out and stores it in there. This is an electric pump for getting the oil out. And this one is the most common of all, a little hand pump for getting the oil out. And if you've got a really posh engine, it'll have an oil pump stuck to the side of it. You'll also need some containers, some with oil in and some with no oil in, and maybe even an oil filter to boot, and something to get that oil filter off with. Okay, the first bit's easy. You've just got to find your engine. I like to open everything up that I can do, so there's as much accessibility and there's as much light as I can use. My oil filter hides round that side of the engine there. My gearbox hides round the back with that yellow plug in it there. And the engine dipstick hides under the side just there. The first thing we'll need to do in order to take the old oil out is warm it up. Get it nice and warm. Get all the debris that's down there suspended in the oil so it can all come out with it. As soon as she's going, give her some revs, let that engine warm up and don't forget to check that you've got water coming out the back if you haven't used it for a bit. A little bit of smoke there as well, eh, to clear. Well, she's pumping plenty of water so that's one good thing. Hey, just look at them beautiful seals on the inside of that. Ooh. Mine takes at least 20 minutes before it gets warm. So I suppose it's ideal time to put the kettle on, have a nice brew. And when you finish the brew, it should be just about ready for you to get on with. I suppose one of the Brucey bonuses with this job is there's not actually many tools required. And certainly the most technical is the kettle for making the tea. And it looks like I've picked quite a nice day for it. Running my engine in the marina. It looks like I've sent my new neighbour, Mike, there, X white water, into a trance. Well, I've finished my tea, so the engine must be warm by now. My revs sound fast, but only because I've speeded the video up. The engine's about 800 RPM, and I'm just checking that it's all nice and warm. Well, it's all nice and warm, except for the bits like this that are meant to be cold. I need to lift my floor up in order to get at my batteries so that that new pump that I'm going to try, which is the electric one, um, I need to connect it directly to a battery, so here they are. Well, first things first, let's get my rubber gloves on, look after my skin. Then as we're going to drain the feed, the dipstick hole, I best get the dipstick out, tucked away nicely around the side. After removing the dipstick, you just insert the plastic tube and hopefully you can get it as far down into the sump as possible. I'm all excited going to try this lecky pump. I've never used it for this before. So anyway, you just clip it on the batteries. One pipe obviously is sucking and the other pipe is blowing. Put the blowing pipe into an old oil container, connect it up and hopefully switch it on and it should get on with the job. Now that the pump's running, it should be sucking back there somewhere, so I'm just checking there's oil coming up. And you can see it running the length of the pipe now and into the waste container. It was all going so well. And then I realised the hot oil going through these soft plastic pipes has made them really floppy, really floppy. So that the change in their structure, they could fall out of your waste container, for example. The pickup pipe, which is really small, more like washer pipe off a car, has turned to jelly almost, so I'm going to have to give it up. It was good to try it, because at least I know it doesn't work now. I've got my manual pump with me, so I'll be able to carry on. I've been using these manual vacuum pumps for years, and they really are easy to use. I don't know why I bothered with the electric one. I just thought it was a good idea and the right price when I seen it sitting on the shelf waving at me. Well, I'll see what extra I can get out with this. There's definitely going to be some more left in there, I'm quite sure. 
here it comes so there's oil coming I end up pulling another litre out so that's a lot that the electric pump couldn't get after sucking the engine dry I sucked the gearbox dry I'm blessed with the same oil in the gearbox as the engine so it's a job you may as well do at the same time after you've got all the oils out of the engine and the gearbox then it's that fella the oil filter hiding around the side there it's okay because we'll get him it's nice that this one's got the date and the hours written on top of it because you can see when it was actually last done and when it next needs doing top tip here on the Yan Mars there's always a pesky little wire that runs past the filter it goes to the oil pressure switch be careful not to snag it with the filter removing tool on the way off and vice versa when you're putting it on be careful not to trap it underneath the filter or you'll end up with a bilge full of engine oil when you start up you can see it was last serviced in january 2020 which is actually two years ago well it hasn't really skipped the service because when it was done in 2020 it wasn't used for 12 months due to covid just before you take the filter off you want to stick a little oil catcher underneath it anything at all sometimes you won't be able to fit anything down there to catch the spilling oil so better than nothing at all there's a lot of tissue put a lot of tissue there and see how much of it you can catch you don't want it going down the bilge if you can avoid it once the flow stops you can go ahead and remove the filter get the filter out the way and make sure when you take it off you keep it upright so as not to pour anything else out of it uprights the messy bit pointing up and then just clean the rest of the area where you've been working so there's no drips going to go down your bilge if you spill any oil in the bilge you'll have to mop it out because your bilge pump shouldn't be used for pumping engine oil out besides the environmental impact it would have the engine oil actually destroys the rubbers of the valves and the diaphragm within the pumps right let's get our new oil filter on but just before we put them on we stick our hours and our date on and we get a little bit of engine oil on our finger and we oil the seal ring we oil the ring for two reasons one of the reasons so it doesn't stick on the way on and pick up and the other one is it allows us to tighten the filter down with our hands properly we never use a tool to tighten the oil filter unless you call your hand the tool i'm now going to start getting the old oil and putting it in the oil container to take it away um, it also will show me when i put it in an empty oil container how much oil i've actually removed from my engine and my gearbox so now that we've got the oil out we've got to get it back in well i like the smallest little fillable bottles that you can get hold of little drinks water bottles and the likes and i put the oil in them to cant it down i'd just rather do this than end up with oil everywhere use a funnel if you haven't got a steady hand when you're pouring the oil into the bottle as well and if you notice i've got cardboard down to try and keep every bit of the boat clean i can do I go ahead then and start to fill the gearbox but the gearbox has got one drawback this dipstick i've never seen engine oil on the end of it yet i don't know whether it's because the end of it's perfectly circular or what i just don't see the level on the stick i can't i can see the line which the level's meant to go to which is about five millimeters up you can see the line there about five millimeters up but you can't see the oil on the dipstick however if the dipstick gets down to the uh, oil then normally you can actually get a, a film of oil across the hole at the bottom of the dipstick so that's the only indication that it normally gives me so i get a screwdriver of a similar sort of length and i'll use that as my dipstick until i see oil on the bottom of it and even when i can see oil on the bottom of that i can't see it on the dipstick itself but i can see it on the screwdriver so there's definitely oil if i put that screwdriver in there i can't see it on the dipstick but there it is a wiper on my glove i can see it clearly on the bottom of the screwdriver so do yourself a favor don't rely on the dipstick get a screwdriver and don't overfill your gearbox next same method cap off the engine stip cap off the engine and uh, let's get the oil in i fill the engine with the little bottle as well 
because it's just under a shelf and it's very difficult to get a funnel in of any size and get the can anywhere near it. I do this until I've used about the same quantity that came out. And then using the engine dipstick, I dip the engine oil and see if it's anywhere near where it needs to be. I'm looking for it to be between the minimum and maximum mark and that's all I'm after. The maximum's up here. So I've got plenty of oil in there at the moment. It's in the gap where it needs to be, but I need to add some more. So it's dipstick in and um, cap on, and then we're going to run it. Now my engine says in the book it takes 2.6 litres. Yeah, between the engine and the gearbox here, I've used two and a half litres. So that would make you think that the engine's short of oil. Well, the one thing that's definite about a marine diesel engine is it can be at any angle depending on how it's fitted in a boat and they come with a choice of sumps when they're buying them so the quantity is only a guideline and that's why I say you can use what you take out as a good guide to what's going back and then finish up with your dipstick and get the levels correct after running the engine for 60 seconds or so you go back and you re-dip it and it's at this point you want to set your level well normally to the maximum but certainly not above the maximum dipstick out it's a bit easier to see on this dipstick because it's flat and not round so I can spot the oil level and it needs a little bit more so that's what I'll do I'll put a little bit more in and you see my oil cap on the top of the engine just here watch it disappear poof I've already topped the oil up and I'm back for the next dip and after topping it up and running it then you can finalize the last dip and make sure that your oil levels exactly where you want it Keep the dipstick downhill so it doesn't run down the stick. And check it. And we're happy with that, aren't we? Yep, spot on. Let's put that dipstick away for the final time. I don't know why I'm cleaning it to put it away for the final time. They're in quite an awkward space, but once they're in, they're in. Then the cap. Mustn't forget to put the cap on. Screw the cap down. And that's it, job done. Just put everything back together and reverse the taking it all apart and you're ready to rock and roll. One more thing, we removed two and a half litres nearly in total and we've used three litres, two left out of five. My previous engine hours were 10.31, this year I got up to 11.94, 163 hours I ran, 150 I'm supposed to change my oil at. I was 13 hours overdue. Please subscribe and you can go and see my past content as well as my future content if you wish, if you've enjoyed it that is. Until next time I bid you a fond farewell.